We're pleased to be joined with Doug Peterson, the new Jaguars coach. Doug, so great to uh, talk with you. Congratulations and welcome to Jacksonville. Thank you so much. Thanks for having me, and uh, I'm just excited to get to work. Well, tell us what's this day like for you, walking through and meeting everybody. You know, it's a, it's a great day. Um, it's really a, it's really a great day from the standpoint of you know from from the organization. It's exciting to, to obviously step into this next chapter for them, and, and for me, it's exciting because it's another new chapter. You know, back on the sideline as a head football coach again in the National Football League, and to be able to represent, you know, a, a really kind of a storied franchise. Really, I can remember back in, in 1995, I was a part of the Carolina Panthers. When when the, when the expansion took place. And so, you know, it's a lot of great history and I'm just excited to get going. Tell us about your family. So, you know, my wife and I have been married 30 years. We just celebrated our 30th anniversary a couple weeks ago. And then we have three sons, uh, Drew, Josh, and Joel. And uh, our oldest is married. Uh, our youngest is still trying to figure his way out in the NFL. He's, a, he's an undrafted free agent tight end and, and still still trying to see if he can get picked up, you know, on some of these teams. And, and then we have a, our youngest son is a, a sophomore, second-year uh, student at Clemson. That is awesome. We got a couple of dogs. You were telling me. We got two dogs, uh, big lab Tex, and then we got a, a golden doodle, or I should say, a labradoodle, uh, Lucy. Uh, she's about twenty pounds. Love them both. You know, my wife would think other. My, my wife says I don't <laughs> like them, but I do. I really do like. I do really like both dogs. They're they're really good. That's awesome. What was it like for you uh, being out for for a year and and staying connected to the league, and so that you could jump right back in and, and know everything that's going on? You know, the year off was 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 really good for me. Um, it gave me time to spend with my brother and his wife. You know, I, I lost my brother to I'm pancreatic sorry, cancer yeah. in October, Correct. and so I got I'll get a chance to really spend quality time with with him back in louisiana and, and which i would probably wouldn't have otherwise and you know we had a, we had a grandson born um just celebrated his first birthday and then of course our oldest got married you know in july so it was really good from a family standpoint to uh to really take the year off and really kind of recharge and re you know reflect uh on my five years you know in in philadelphia and you know, learn and, and, and grow and, and move on and, and into this next opportunity. You said something really interesting about Trevor that you'd spoken to opposing coaches that had gone against him. What what stood out from those conversations about the kind of player you're inheriting here? Just the, the talent level. And, you know, he, he's, he's, he's the type of guy that they, they saw the leadership on the football field. They saw his athleticism, athleticism on the football field. You know, the arm talent is there. You know, and now it's just a matter of just developing that and growing that and making it even better uh, where his completion percentage gets a little bit higher you know his movement skills his eyes the anticipation all that stuff that now comes as we grow you know with trevor lawrence you know in our system yeah it's exciting that you're going to call the plays is that something that you want to do um and but, but building the staff around that uh what you said very high confidence level uh what what's sort of your timetable for when you'd like to have all that done I mean, I, I wish it were done now, yeah. you know, but obviously there's there's things I got to I got to work through and, and uh, you know, there's protocols and the process and, and really just making sure I get the right guys. You know, it's not about just selecting a coach, but it's got to be the right guys and the right fit uh, for our football team, for me. Um, and and, and I, you know, I look for guys that are that are great motivators, but good teachers, you know, and, and really love football. And then I want those high energy guys, too, that can they can bring a lot of energy every day. We've heard, obviously, traditionally, it's you got to build it in the trenches, but the NFL has gotten to the point where it seems like on the perimeter, the, the, the weapons that some of these teams have, and obviously you're familiar with that. What sort of has your philosophy changed at all? Where are you on, you know, the importance between trenches and the importance of, of playmakers on offense? Well, I, I still believe that the games are won and lost in the trenches, honestly. And, you know, you, you're not going to have a passing attack if you can't protect the quarterback. Mm -hmm. And and so, you know, I, I believe in throwing the football, obviously. I mean, I, I think throw to win and you run to score. Uh, you're, I, I yeah. should say, Throw to score, yeah. run to win. I got uh -huh. that. I got that backwards, yeah. but that, that's kind of my philosophy of this deal in, in, in teaching teaching a young quarterback like Trevor how to how to really throw the football and be a great passer in the NFL. But you know, if you, if you don't have the guys up front to protect him, it just it, it's hard. It makes it really hard. But complementary to that on offense, having having a really like a number one right wide receiver, you know, with with the, some of the guys that we have here that could stand out and be that guy, and then obviously your tight ends as well. And uh, you know, those are all things that we'll evaluate this offseason. Do you have an idea defensively, schematically, of what you're looking for? You know, I, I love the structure that is here. I love the, uh, you know, it's just kind of a 3-4, you know, base. It's a very versatile front. Um, use of linebackers all over the place because they also make really good core special teams players as well. Um, and it's something that I want to continue to keep. It's, it's really hard to go in and 
change the in, the entire structure of your defense if you if you've been built for a certain you know you've drafted players in those positions right or you you bring in the free agents in those positions it's hard to really change in midstream but you know I've always loved that structure and, and want to continue that you guys have the number one pick a lot of cap space how, how much do you enjoy getting into the draft and getting into free agency and, and making those acquisitions I enjoy the process you know I it, this is this is you know, this is where the excitement comes for the upcoming season is, is getting into the draft and, and, and understanding who's going to come on, you know, who are we going to select that are going to help us make, a, you know, a better football team, a better roster. And and uh, I, I enjoy the process. I love I love diving in there and having having really good, meaningful conversation on players and and uh, and then ultimately, you know, selecting them on draft day. Great stuff. Doug Peterson. Welcome. Thank you so much for your time. Can't wait to cover you. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Looking forward to it.